Why does Mrs. Hall find the scientist eccentric? In eccentric means peculiar. What curious episode occurs in the study? And what other extraordinary things happen to the inn? Eager to get away from crowded London, he took a train to the village of Iping, where he booked two rooms at the local inn. Inn is a kind of a hotel or a rest hotel. The arrival of the stranger at an inn in winter was, in any case, an unusual event. The stranger of such uncommon appearance set all tongues wagging, means all started talking about it. Mrs. Hall, the landlord's wife, made every effort to be friendly to the scientist. But Griffin had no desire to talk and told her, My reason for coming to Iping is a desire for solitude, loneliness. I do not wish to be disturbed in my work. Besides, an accident has affected my face. <coughs> so that he could that was the reason he mentioned why he covered his face. Satisfied that her guest was an eccentric scientist, and in view of the fact that he had paid her in advance, Mrs. Hall was prepared to excuse his stranger strange habits and irritable temper. So the scientist had an irritable temper, he got irritated easily and he had strange habits, but Mrs. Hall did not mind it because he had given the advance. But the stolen money did not last long. The stolen money that the scientist had, Griffin had, did not last long. And presently Griffin had no had to admit that he had no more ready cash. He pretended, however, that he was expecting a check to arrive at any moment, and after that he could pay. Shortly afterward, a curious episode occurred. Very early in this morning, a clergyman and his wife were awakened by noises in the study. Creeping downstairs, they heard the chink of money being taken from the clergyman's desk. Without making any noise and with a poker grasped firmly in his hand, the clergyman flung open the door. Surrender! he shouted. Then to his amazement he realized that the room appeared to be empty. He and his wife looked around the desk and behind the curtains and even up to the chimney. There wasn't a sign of anybody, yet the desk had been opened and the housekeeping money was missing. Extraordinary affair, the clergyman kept saying for the rest of the day. But it was not as extraordinary as the behavior of Mrs. Hall's furniture a little later that morning. Means what happened to the furniture, the way in which the furniture behaved, that was more extraordinary than the missing money from the clergyman's desk. The landlord and his wife were up very early. They had woken up very early and were surprised to see the scientist's door wide open. Usually it was shut and locked, and it was furious if any and he was furious if anyone entered his room. The opportunity seemed too good to be missed. Mrs. Hall thought that the door is open and this is an opportunity to say look into the room and find out what he is doing. They peeped round the door, saw nobody and decided to investigate, to go inside and find out what it is. The bed clothes were cold, showing that the scientist must have been up for some time. And stranger still, the clothes and bandages that he always wore were lying about the room. That means he had become invisible and he had gone somewhere. That's what we understand, but they did not understand. All of a sudden, Mrs. Hall heard a sniff close to her ear. So, to her ear, he, she could listen to somebody say sniffing. A moment later, the hat on the bed post leapt up and dashed itself into her face. Just imagine how surprised she must have been. Then the bedroom chair became alive. Springing into the air, it charged straight at her legs foremost. With the legs facing Mrs. Hall, 
the chair came towards her and it attacked her as she and her husband turned away in the terror the extraordinary chair pushed them both out of the room and then appeared to slam the lock the door and lock the door after them after them mrs hall almost fell down the stairs in hysteries she was convinced that the room was haunted by spirits and that the stranger had somehow caused these to enter into her furniture so the stranger had done something that is what she understood had done something to the spirits that were haunting that place and the stranger had got, uh, done something with the help of which say the spirits had got into the furniture my poor mother used to sit in that chair she moaned to think it should rise up against me now the feeling about among the neighbors there was that the trouble was caused by witchcraft some witchcraft is there and because of that this trouble has arisen but witchcraft or not when news of the burglary at the clergyman's home became known the strange scientist was strongly suspected of having had had a hand in it so he had done something that is what say everybody suspected though people were talking about witchcraft suspicion means doubt grew even stronger when he suddenly produced some ready cash though he had admitted not long before that he had no money so earlier he had said that he had no money and now say he said that yes the cash that you wanted that i have so the village constable was secretly sent for instead of waiting for the constable mrs hall went to the scientist who had somehow mysteriously appeared from his empty bedroom i want to know what you have been doing to my chair upstairs she demanded but i want to know how it is you came out of an empty room and how you entered the locked room these are the questions that she put forward the scientist was always quick tempered now he became furious you don't understand who or what i am he shouted very well i'll show you suddenly he threw off bandages whiskers spectacles and even nose it took him only a minute to do this the horrified people in the bar found themselves staring at a headless man the head became invisible because he removed the bandage whiskers spectacles and the uh, artificial nose that he had put on mr jaffers the constable now arrived and was quite surprised to find that he had to arrest a man without a head but jaffers was not easily prevented from doing his duty if a magistrate's warrant ordered a person's arrest then the person had to be arrested with or without his head that is what he understood that is what the constable understood there followed a remarkable scene as the policeman tried to get hold of a man who was becoming more and more invisible as he threw off one garment after another finally a shirt flew into the air and the constable found himself struggling with someone he could not see at all some people tried to help him but found themselves hit by blows that seemed to come from nowhere in the end jaffers was knocked unconscious as he made a last attempt to hold on to the unseen scientist there were nervousness excited cries of hold him but this was easier said than done means it was easy to say that hold him hold him but it was very difficult to do that grafin had shaken off himself free and no one knew where to lay hands on him so there this is by hg wells you may go through these questions and try to find out the answer grafin was rather a lawless person how he was lawless that you have to comment how would you access grafin as a scientist as a scientist he had done remarkable things but what about the lawlessness well thank you go through the lesson again and note down your doubts